All right, well, today is January the 25th. It's 8 a.m. here in Brisbane. Thank you, everyone, who's come to our fourth live session of Prep Hour with Steve. And today our focus is going to be writing the medical consultation. So this is going to be an interactive session today. Uh, I'm going to need a lot of input um, from all the attendees. And our goal is going to be to write a paragraph based on a medical consultation. The task we're going to, the task we're going to look at today is um, a doctor's, it's, it's from a doctor's task, like a doctor's set of case notes. But the format we're going to use could apply to any profession, um, whether it be dentists, physiotherapists, uh, occupational therapists, speech pathologists, nurses, any of those professions quite often have case notes where the patient has attended your clinic multiple occasions over a period of time. And it's your job to summarize those visits or those consultations. So what we're going to look at today, we're going to summarize one consultation and we're going to get a, a look at, um, and we're going to look at a technique for doing that. Now, if you're, um, let's see if I can get, make sure everyone's here. If you're viewing this, give me a thumbs up. I'll just adjust my technology. I can see a few comments coming through now. I'll just check that everybody. So let's see who's here. Hello to Samara, welcome Nadia. Um, good evening, hello there in Manchester. Um, I'm getting a thumbs up from George and smiley face from Mary. Yep, everyone put in your comments. And just let me know where you are now and what time it is. So just type in where you're located and what time it is. As I said, I'm here in Brisbane, Australia. It's 8 a.m. where I am. How about for you guys? Type in your location and your time. So we've got Mary over in the UK. It's 10 p.m. in Birmingham. That's wonderful. <clears throat> Maria in Egypt where it's 12 a.m. Thank you for staying up. Another person from Manchester where it's 10 p.m. Joseph is in Dublin. All right, 10 p.m. there. A lot of people over there in the UK. It's wonderful to see all the UK people. Latifa also from the UK. That's great. We have uh, Augusto in Portugal. We have Novelin in Kuwait at 1 a.m. Ahmed in Sudan. Welcome, Ahmed. Doshi in the UK. We have Kamrudin. Hello, Kamrudin in Brisbane. Hope you're well. All right, we'll keep putting in those comments and um, it's great to know that we can reach out to people um, all over the world. You've got to love that ability. All right, and I do hope your preparation for the OET exam is going well. And hello to everyone watching the video right now at whatever point in time it is for you. Okay, so we've got a little image here, everyone. We've got a little image. And I'll use my pointer here. So here's our little image of the medical consultation. So we have our subjective history and our objective history. So subjective, um, we usually use it in this context to refer to how the patient is feeling. So what the patient has stated. So the patient walks into your clinic and you ask them, how have you been? Um, what brings you here today? And then the patient is going to respond. And in this case, the patient's not very happy, reports I have a really sore head and I feel tired. Now, if you were gonna summarize what the patient said, obviously you're not going to use the same language. You're gonna turn it into um, 
the patient symptoms from your perspective as a health professional. And that's where we're going to be objective. So when we write objectively, we're going to remove words like really, because that's emphatic, really sore, uh, really tired. We're going to remove that sort of language. And here's an example of objective data. Susan had a temperature of 39.3 associated with tiredness. So we've summarized that really sore head. You've taken the temperature and then you've um, expressed that in your words. And then when the patient said, I feel really tired, we've formalized that to say associated with tiredness. All right, so that's the sort of thing um, that you need to do. And that's the difference between subjective and objective information. So we're going to analyze that a little bit further in a moment. And then we're going to go ahead and write our plan. Because at the end of the consultation, um, you're always going to have a plan. So if we summarize that consultation, the patient presents and they give you their subjective information. You do your examination and that's where you find your objective findings. And then the final step is you make a plan for that patient to go ahead. So all that information is summarized in the case notes. And it's your job then to summarize it further and put it into a paragraph in a referral letter. Okay, so let's look at um, writing about the subjective history. So um, what are the features of writing about the subjective history from the patient's perspective? Well, it's going to focus mainly on the patient. So you're going to use the patient will often be your subject of, the, um, of your sentence. So remember, we've got subject, verb, and object. So the actual patient will often be the subject. That means it's going to lightly, um, active verb tenses will be common. If the patient is our subject, that means they are the actor. Therefore, you'll use active tense. So that's a common trait um, when writing subjective history. You're going to use active um, tense rather than passive or active form rather than passive form. Now we're talking about an earlier today, we're looking at the first consultation. So it's a past consultation. So that means we're going to um, commonly will use past tense in this case. So just a few things to remember when you're writing that. Um, you're going to need some time references, everyone. You're going to need some time references. Uh, initially, um, because it's in this case the first visit, perhaps the date. In this case, we're going back in time. So the first visit was the 12th of August 2018. And there's some different structures we can use. For example, when she first presented on this such and such a date or when he first presented on this date. Some language that we might use um, when we're talking about the subjective history, we might use verbs like complain. The patient complained of pain in the lower back. Report is a great word. The patient reported um, difficulty sleeping and nausea. So the report is a great word. Um, state, the patient stated they had frequent headaches. So again, that's a formal way of saying what the patient stated. The patient had experience. I like the word experience. We often use this for various symptoms, um, such as pain. The patient had experienced pain um, for three weeks or the patient had experienced headaches. The patient had experienced nausea. Any of these things that aren't very pleasant, we often use the word experience um, because it is something you do, it's, you know, it's something that affects you, so it is an experience. And a common one the patient suffered from. Something that was affecting the patient, the patient suffered from. Uh, the patient had been suffering from insomnia for a certain period of time. Okay, so these are some of the words we can use when we write our paragraph. Now I'm going to go to our members here today, and I want you to help me write this paragraph 
So I'm going to let you input the sentences. And we're going to have a bit of a discussion. I'm going to respond to your comments. And by the end of this, hopefully, we've come up with a few different ways that we could summarize this paragraph. So here's your chance to input. I'm going to create a little text box here. I'm going to write our paragraph. I might try to make it a little bit bigger to help with clarity. So I've made that screen size a little bit bigger there. There we go. Is that clear, everyone? Okay, now when you're ready, put in your comments. So we've got to begin our, and I'll watch my font size. Let me know how clear this is, everyone. Osma says, I can't see the words on the screen. Uh, maybe you've got to make it, depending on what you're using, whether you're using your phone or laptop. Um, if you're using your phone, maybe try your laptop. Um, probably make it a little bit better. I might be able to go, let's see if I can go any bigger here, everyone. I'll go as big as I can. A little bit bigger there, a bit bigger again. Okay, let's try that everyone. Yeah, it might be your internet connection there, Osama, if you can't see it. So you just check that at your end. Okay, let's begin. So um, I might try the, I could use any of these sentences, everyone. I could start with initially. Uh, I could start with on 1208.18, but I might begin with this one. When he, or let's use his name, when Mr. Cochrane, that's our patient name, first presented on 0818. So we're using a complex sentence putting in our first clause, our dependent clause. And now let's see, what do we know? So if we look, I've started the sentence, everyone, and you can continue. I've got some comments coming in. But we know his subjective history. We know he had shortness of breath, tightness in the chest. He had a cough, especially at night. Shortness of breath was worse when lying down. We do know that he feels better when the head is raised at the end of the bed. Now, before I write any more, if you look down the bottom, it said feels better when head raised at the end of the bed. Now that's written in present tense, but we're gonna transfer that to past tense because it's present tense here because it was present at the time. So when the notes were taking the right to use present tense to describe the current symptoms, but this is a past date, so we will need to use past tense there. Okay, let's have a look at some sentences from the audience. So Mary's the first one. Mary said, initially, Mr. Cochrane presented with a history of shortness of breath associated with chest tightness and cough, predominantly at night. He also reported that he feels better um, when head is raised at the end of the bed. Now that's an excellent sentence, Mary. Very, very good. There's only one little error there where you're using feels as um, present tense rather than past. I'll look at another example. Latifa wrote, initially on 12.8.18, Mr. Cochrane presented complaining of shortness of breath, tightness in chest and nocturnal cough. That's very nice as well. Um, another one from Maria. 
Mr. Cochrane first presented on 12.8.18 with dyspnea, nocturnal cough, orthopnea and tightness in the chest. So, so one thing we can notice that Maria's done, she's turning that subjective into objective using a lot of medical terminology, such as um, orthopnea uh, and dyspnea. I think the dyspnea, uh, now I'm not a health professional, might be shortness of breath. What about the orthopnea? Maybe that's tightness of the chest. So you can summarize using medical words as well. Um, you're allowed to do that. Um, just make sure that you're accurate um, and you are summarizing accurately from those case notes. Um, okay. All right, let's pick one of those. I'm going to write one of those ones that someone, an audience member did. So he first presented on 12.8.18. I like that with a history of, with a history of shortness of breath. Comma. Um, associated with chest tightness and now someone said cough right but here's a question do we need something here before the word cough I think we need an article and a cough we need an art and a cough so we often the patient has a cough. So we need an article for that one because it's countable. Um, with a cough, I like the word predominantly. That's nice synonym, everyone. Predominantly. Predominantly. Spell that one correctly. Um, predominantly at night. Um, now, I would go a full stop. That's quite a lot of information in one sentence. So we've covered the first three aspects of the subjective history. Um, what else have we got? He also, now I like this one. See how we're still using, um, we're using our active sentence. He also reported he also reported that it worsened he also reported that it worsened when lying down and he felt better when and we need an article that says when head is raised and and he put that it was when lying down and and he felt better when the head we got an add an article there when the head now it's not his head everyone what's being raised here um ooh, when head is raised yeah maybe his head when um, he felt better when um, um, he felt better, I'll say when his head, now we're changing to uh, um, passive, when his head was raised at the end of the bed. Now we're going to adjust this a little bit, but there's an example, everyone. And it's interesting, we've mainly used, I'll get my little pointer here. Let's analyze it a little bit, this first one. So he presented on this date with, he presented on 12.8 with a history of shortness of breath associated with, oh, hang on, I've made a mistake there. I didn't see that. When Mr. Cochran first presented, um, let me readjust this everyone. I'm going to have to fix this up. 
when Mr. Coppin first presented on 12, this, um, I'm going to say um, he, because I've used a clause, he report, I'm going to use reported here. Oh, I've got reported below. Um, I'll use reported again. He reported a history of. So we needed to put the subject. Apologies there, everyone. He reported a history of um, shortness of breath associated with chest tightness and cut off predominantly at night. And we can use reported again because of the word also. Um, but we could use a different word if we wanted to. I'll just write it in. We could also use stated. So there are two main reporting verbs. So if you want some variation, you can change it there. He also stated that it worsened when lying down and he felt better when his head was raised at the end of the bed. Okay, so when his head was raised. All right, and let's see a few other. Now I saw some great vocabulary from the audience. So I'm gonna have a, a look at that. And I'll look at the writing. Now, Dine, right, he felt better when he's in upright position with his head raised. Um, yes, I'm just not sure, Dine, that sounds good, but is he in an upright position? So that's what we don't quite know. Is he actually upright? Head raised, maybe a 45 degree angle. Um, we've got another comment. I can't read Arabic, so I'm not sure from whom. He said on 12 8, 18, the patient presented with a complaint of shortness of breath, which was associated with tightness in, in chest. Now make sure to say, for body parts, everyone, tightness in the chest. So remember, and I'll put a little notes here as we go along. We'll just do a little grammar work. Grammar. We use um, articles before body parts, i.e., the chest. So note that the uh, the subject, the case notes, don't use the article, but you need to. So these are um, some common errors people make. I'll keep reading. Um, shortness of breath, which was associated with tightness of the chest and cough, especially at night. Um, and I would say associated with a cough. So remember that we're going to use an article for the word cough. We can have multiple coughs. So a cough, we normally use an article with the word cough because it's a countable noun, like a headache. He had a cough, so you've got to remember that. Um, someone wrote, it is aggravated by lying down and relieved by raising head up. Yes, but you've got to use past tense there um, now I put the article with chest. Um, if what you're referring to there, someone said I missed. I've got the article chest here. I don't here. I don't need a um, article because it's not the chest tightness. We've got the noun tightness, so no article required here not necessary because the noun is tightness. And someone wrote, it, it is relieved by lying down. Now you're going to say, um, so I'll give you one more sentence we could write. I'll put this in. It's good. We can write like this, everyone. It was, we've got to use past tense. It was aggravated. Good work. It was aggravated. Um, it was aggravated by lying down. That's acceptable. And relieved by raising the head. And I could even put relieved when raising the head. Um, okay, when I could put sleeping, we could just adjust that a little bit. 
So there's many different ways we could write that. All right. Um, let's have a bit of a look here. Let's check a couple of things. A few more comments. Latifa wrote, initially on 12 8, 18 Mr. Cochran presented complaining of shortness of breath, tightness in the chest good. And now that was the other. I wanted to talk about vocabulary. That should be aggravated. Yeah, that's aggravated, by the way. No, that didn't look right. Let's just check something there. Uh, I saw some great vocabulary that people wrote and I wanted to talk about that. So I like words like um, for vocabulary. I like words like nocturnal cough. So anytime you use language like this, you're showing your assessors the breadth of your language, the depth of your vocabulary. So that's a very positive thing. All right, well done everyone. Everyone's written really, really well. So we've seen, and we used a lot of those elements um, that we can see. So well done everyone for writing this. And if I have a bit of a look, let's just make sure we got everything that we wanted. We put his name, Mr. Cochran. So always mention the name. Every time you start a new paragraph, it's a good idea to mention the patient's name in the first sentence. We didn't need to put his date of birth. That would have gone under the subject line. And um, we've mentioned the date and we've mentioned the symptoms here. So it was all mentioned. So that's the first part of the paragraph, everyone. That's the first part of the paragraph. Now we have to move along to our findings, the objective history. So let's have a little look at that. Um, okay, and we've used, I'll just mention, we used um, these different words. Okay, uh, and fi before I move on, mainly active tense was used. We focused on the patient and it was written in past tense. Okay, let's clear it all. Let's go to the next page. Okay, I'm going to move it up. So this time we're going to do the objective findings, everyone. So now this is all part of the first consultation. So we're on a new page, everyone. And the features of this um, will include focus on the findings. So that means your findings. We're going to focus on the treatment. So when we focus on the treatment, we're definitely going to be looking at passive form because we're going to make the treatment the subject. When we say findings, again, it could be active or passive, depending on what you're trying to express. Um, but we'll start to see more passives, but it's basically a combination here. We're going to use expressions like on examination, because um, you did the examination. In addition, or moreover, to talk about <clears throat> extra symptoms. We're going to use certain words like things were located, or so where something was located, or, or what a particular test revealed or showed maybe the x-ray or the ultrasound or the <clears throat> auscultation revealed or showed. So we're going to start using verbs like this. And when you're making some sort of um, di provisional diagnosis, um, based on your findings, you may use words indicative of or suggestive of a particular condition. So you guys, I know you're all professional, so you're very good at writing these sentences. So you can start typing in as you wish. And I'm going to just quickly look at the case notes. So we've got the word dyspnea. So people said before in subjective, he has dyspnea. Uh, and here it is in objective, he's dyspnea, right? So perhaps that tells us in our subjective, we might write, uh, we might write, he had shortness of breath, but when we talk about findings, we may move to um, language such as dyspnea, the adjective of having dyspnea. 
Uh, maybe you guys can help me here. BL ankle edema. What does BL stand for? I'll just wait in for everyone to put that in. All right, trying to help you there, Osama, trying to make it clear for you. Yes, bilateral. So one of your jobs in this exam is to expand on the case notes. So we're going to use bilateral. We'll use that word. Um, he's got high jugular venous, venous pressure. Now, I don't really know what that means. Jugular may be the throat. You can help me out here, everyone. Um, some sort of pressure in the vein, perhaps, around the throat. Um, apex beat lateral to mid clavicular line and in the sixth ICS. Hmm. That's your language there, everyone. I'm not sure what an apex beat is. I do, I can imagine the clavicle on the shoulder, so the mid clavicular line. And what's the ICS, everyone? Yes, Abdul's helping us. So high jugular venous pressure, a vein in the neck. Okay. Apex beat lateral to mid clavicular line. There's some beat here, is that right? And what is the sixth ICS? What's the ICS? Intercostal space. Thank you, Nadia. We'll type that down. So we have fun with all this language. Intercostal space. Still doesn't exactly tell me where that is. Cardiovascular normal. Abdo normal, of course, abdo means abdomen. Auscultation. Crepitations in lung base. Now, my understanding of auscultation is when you put on your stethoscope and you listen to the breathing. Crepitations. What are crepitations? It's some sort of sound that you're hearing, I can imagine. Um, and then we've got ECG. Type in what that is. Is that electrocardiogram? Um, CXR, it's a type of x-ray, isn't it? A type of x-ray. Yes, Shakir's help. Yes, crepitations is crackles, so sounds from deep in the lungs. Uh, people are saying, oh, yes, intercostal space, yes, between the ribs. I thought, I thought that was true. There are six ribs, or more than six, but there are many ribs, something where there's many of, so that would be the ribs, so the space between the ribs. Okay, then we've got other expressions such as chest x-ray, uh, ECG, has anyone written what that is? Lots of professional, hello Pejman, I think I recognize your name. I'm just looking at some of your comments. Ah, yes, electrocardiogram. Thank you, Joseph. Now, some of the questions you might be asking, at, at what point do we write in full or do we just use ECG? Well, look, I say you don't, you could write electrocardiogram, you could write that in full, but ECG is a common word, so I don't think it would be wrong to write ECG revealed because the acronym is common. Even I know it. Um, CXR, no, I would always write chest x-ray in full would be my advice. And DX for diagnosis, we should always write that in full as well. But the, the, it does say expand on the case notes. Um, and we don't want to use too much short form. Obviously, abdomen, we've got to write that in full as well. So in medical writing, in a referral letter, we, it's not really, it's not your handover notes or your notes on the patient. It's a letter summarising it. 
So we tend to use, we tend to write things in full most of the time, but not 100%. It's case by case and it's using your judgment. Uh, but certainly for really long words like MRI, we don't have to write magnetic resonance imaging. So MRI, we would just write MRI. But US for ultrasound, if you said the patient underwent US, that would be incorrect. The patient underwent ultrasound. So you have to look at lots of examples of medical referral letters as well to get a feel for what the standard conventions are. Okay. Abdullah says, does EEG need an article? Yes. He underwent an EEG. Exactly, Abdullah. We're going to use an because the first letter is a vowel, ECG. Okay. Let's start writing, everyone. So we've analysed the case notes. Now, we're not going to put all of that information down. Let's have a look at what we include. So how are we going to begin? This is the same paragraph, by the way, everyone. This would be the same paragraph. Let's start with on examination. That's a common way to begin. Now we've already got some words coming in, so I'm going to look at what you guys write, same as before, and I'm going to start inputting that into our paragraph. On examination. On examination, the patient was. So um, the patient was dyspneic and positive ankle edema. Okay, I'm looking at this. Examination revealed high jugular vein pressure and apex beat lateral to mm -hmm. chest examination was remarkable. Yes, it was remarkable for base crepitations. All right, I'm going to work a little bit with that one on examination. So we're still focusing on the patient. So that's good. The patient was, but this time not saying you're describing the patient. So the patient was dyspneic. So we've used that word, it was dyspneic. Um, with, was dyspneic with positive ankle edema. Okay. And we could put, could we put the word, if we wanted to, I suppose we could put bilateral, i.e. both ankles. Okay. Full stop. I'm going to continue. There are many ways to do this. Now we've got um, which type? So examination revealed high. I don't want to repeat that word here. Examination revealed. And let's see what else we've got. Because I've used examination, so when I start to write this, examination revealed, but that's a bit repetitive for me, everyone. So I don't really want to do that. Can anyone give me a synonym for examination? Could we say this, investigations? Does that work? Investigations? Someone's saying we don't need positive, so let's remove positive. Or I could say, um, okay, let's just try it. Um, okay, investigations reveal, let's, we're playing with this, and I'll look what some other people wrote here. Investigations revealed. I'll look at Maria's here. Well done, Maria. Revealed signs of chest infection, comma, 
Wow. And heart failure, so this is pretty serious. Okay, I'm going to change that one because that's a really nice sentence. I'm going to look for something else here because uh, I've got to make it all line up together. So I'm going to say investigations reveal because I've said this beneath, so maybe I want to say revealed high jugular examination revealed high jugular vein pressure mm -hmm. and and I'm going to put because of because beat is a noun I'm going to say an apex beat an apex beat um, lateral to the mid clavicular line now if anybody wants I'm really writing out these words as they are but could we summarize that? Do we need to put all of this? Is there a way we can do it where we summarize a bit more, you know, clinically? What's, what's, how would you summarize that yourself in your own words rather than simply paraphrasing? I like this sentence though. Chest, um, I'll just type out this sentence. Chest examination was remarkable for, and I like, this is a great sentence, everyone. So someone said base crepitations. Can I say basal? Use the adjective. Basal crepitations. Is, is that right? You tell me. Can we say basal for base? I tend to use the adjective for basal crepitations. So we're using a lot of active tense so far. You can see lots of comments coming through. I'll try to keep up. Everyone likes that. Patient underwent EECG test. Yes, but probably we don't need to say um. You could say underwent, but I would. Um, I'll just point this one out. Nadia wrote patient underwent ECG and chest X-ray. They did undergo it but we could jump ahead and say x-ray revealed. So we don't actually have to say patient underwent an x-ray or ECG. We're going to go straight to it. ECG revealed, x-ray revealed. Okay. And I'll show you a few other tricks. Saeed wrote, having examined him, I detected that he was dyspneic. That's good. Furthermore, he had bilateral ankle edema along with a shift in the apex to the sixth intercostal space. Very good. Moreover, her, but this his, remember, his chest x-ray showed signs of infection. So my provisional diagnosis is left ventricular cardiac failure with pneumonia. That's very good, Sayed, a real pro. Okay. And I'll just show you a couple of sentences here. Let's have a little bit of a play with this. Uh, I'm going to go, I've got the crepitation. So I could say sentence, I can say x-ray revealed. I can use that. I'll just play a little bit here, x-ray, everybody. X-ray revealed. Um, signs of infection. So we can use that sentence. But we can also do sentences like um, signs of infection were, because of the noun signs, were revealed, um, were revealed um, on um, chest x-ray. So you can use um, active or passive. You have to decide, do you want to focus on the infection or do you want to focus on um, the procedure? So it's your choice.
Abdul's written the deviated apex beat laterally to the midclavicular. So everybody's doing fantastic here, everyone. And um, I like this sentence. Sometimes I read this one, everyone. On auscultation. On auscultation. It's like on examination. Um, and I could use the same word. Crepitations in. Now watch what I'm doing here. I've got to use an article, everyone. In the lung base. Can you finish that sentence for me, everyone? So many ways we can write this. And I'm looking at all your writing, everyone that's submitting. I'm seeing excellent writing. And one thing from my experience, health professionals are very good within their subject area. This is your comfort zone, isn't it? This is what you know. Um, and the medical writing and medical language is excellent in the way that it can describe symptoms really, really well. So I can see this is your absolute strength. Um, so let's see what people have written here. Mm, yeah, I also said instead of investigation, the beginning of second sentence, we can replace it with in addition. Um, yeah, we just, I agree with you. So I was a little bit worried about the word investigation because that's more something you send off to a lab. So yes, <clears throat> you've got to plan it a little bit carefully. Um, that's where you've got to plan your paragraph. The trick is not to avoid, is to avoid repetition. <clears throat> Abdul has helped me out here. So crepitations in the lung pace. I wouldn't say steroid have been detected, but this is an earlier visit. So you could say were detective, but so you could say were observed. You've got to use past tense. Remember what I said before? Use past tense for the first consultation. This is the first consultation. There will be a latter consultation. You could use detected. So that's another way to write it. <clears throat> and we can't say was Maria because Crepitations is plural. So we got to watch out that we use a plural verb with a plural subject. Um, could be heard is nice. Could be heard. So that's a, a nice one. So we've got a few options there. Um, uh, there's a nice word that Pedgeman wrote. Instead of signs of infection, so we could do another thing here. Instead of signs, we could put evidence. That's a great word. So lots of things you can use. Um, we're going to circle this word here. We wrote investigation, but perhaps this wasn't the best word, right? Because um, um, I would actually say, because I don't want to repeat examination, I could say, I could change this, everyone. I could make this the subject. Let's change our subject. High jugular vein pressure and an apex basal beat lateral to the mid-cavicular line. And here we could use um, was also um, um, was also um, evident. I might use that word, evident, found. Um, you might ask me a question, do I use was or were? So two things, high jugular vein pressure and apex um, beat lateral to the midclavicular line. That's two things, so I could use were. But <clears throat> there'll be occasions we use was because you might decide this is all part of one clinical picture. So sometimes whether you use was or were depends on the intent of the writer. Are you considering this one overall um, symptom or condition associated with the main picture you're drawing or are you separating them individually? So there's a lot of things we can, <clears throat> a lot of variation in how we write. It's not as simple as it may first appear. All right, and I've got to do one more sentence and I'm going to move on. Lots of comments coming through. 
Um, someone mentioned consistent with infection. That's good expression. Okay. Um, on examination, the patient was suffering from, yes, we've got that. Um, I like that a noticeable bilateral edema. That's good. Um, crepitations have been heard. Crepitations were heard. Past tense. Okay. Now I'm going to write one more thing because we've got to move on, everyone. Um, the diagnosis, everyone. <clears throat> um, how are we going to do that? Um, well, this is your diagnosis by provisional diagnosis. Was, just one example, everyone, was left then tree ventricular failure. So just expanding on that sentence. <clears throat> okay. So we saw lots of good writing there again. Fantastic, everybody, and many different ways to express this, but you really are in your um, strong area there. So that's our objective findings. And we had a variation we could certainly use. We used a lot of active tenses, we did, but we also used, um, we, um, when we decided to focus on the findings, we could use signs of infections were revealed, right? So we've got two ways, or on auscultation, crepitations in the lung base were observed. So if you're focusing on your findings, you're probably going to use passive. But if you're talking about the actual treatment, the x-ray or the, um, the procedure, you might use active form there. Okay. Now I'm going to jump ahead now to the next one. So we've done the subjective. We've done the uh, objective. And now we've got to have a plan, everyone a plan. So this is often you've given the patient advice. Um, we're going to use a lot more passive here, everyone, a lot more passive. This is really where passive comes into play. And I want you to create sentences using the medication, smoking, drinking and review. So we can see the plan, broad spectrum, antibiotics, seven days, frusamide and Dioxin, when we've got dosages there, some advice, stop smoking, reduce drinking, review 14 days later. So we've got to write our plan. So I'm going to check your comments and have a think about how we're going to write this plan, everybody. I'm going to check the comments while you're doing this. Osama wrote, on examination, signs of heart failure was significant, including dyspnea, bilateral heart edema, high jugular venous pressure. In addition, apex beat was deviated to the sixth intercostal space and basal crepitation by chest off. Mm, probably a little bit dense there. Um, investigation revealed cardiomegaly and features of chest infection. That's still nicely written. Maria says, is it better <clears throat> to make sentences out of the symptoms or enumerate them in short medical terms? That's a very good question, uh, Maria. I, I think both have their place and depends on your skill of the writer. Um, and I look at as many examples as you can. Look at all the great stuff that the OET Centre produce. Um, look at their books and look at their examples and look at model letters and see if you can pick up a pattern. Um, but I would say you're going to use a combination. If you can use words like dyspnea and, and other words like that, do use them. But also, <clears throat> we're going to use a lot of, you know, especially subjective particularly, we're going to write what the patient experienced. But in our objective writing, we have more opportunity to use um, some medical terms to clinically summarise information. Okay, now I'm waiting for your comments, everyone. Plan, how are we gonna begin this sentence, everyone? Please type in. <clears throat> I 
You know, there's going to be a lot of sentences come in any moment. So this is the same paragraph, everyone, just to recap. We've written our subjective, we've written our objective findings. Now we're going to talk about what we did. And remember, it's all past tense. Dines this patient was treated with a week of antibody course. Mm, Frusamide and Doxin might need to rewrite that a little bit. Yeah, I'd focus on what you did. I, I removed the patient from the subject line now, and I would really focus on what you did. So I'll start with Osama. Broad, broad spectrum. Let's just go back a little bit. Broad spectrum. Antibiotics. Um, broad, um, um, and I might just put including um, frusamide. Should I use capital from frusamide, everyone? Is, that a, is, is frusamide the generic name or the brand name? You have to tell me. I'm going to go, maybe it's the drug, it's the generic name, it's the active const constituent. If it's, if it's the uh, actual brand name, we need capitals. You might have to tell me that one. Which one is it? So I'll say including frusamide and dioxin were prescribed. Now, do we need to put the dosage? Because it's an earlier consultation, I'd say the dosage is not relevant. Perhaps if it's a current medication, we mentioned the dosage but this is six months ago or something. So probably we can, um, and I might remove that comma, but we can, um, we can actually remove that. <clears throat> and it's generic name, thank you. A uh, frucemide, not antibiotic. Okay, so there you go. You've got to help. So, broad, so let's remove it, we're prescribed. So we're prescribed. Um, and I could put this, is this, tell me if I'm correct, to um, treat the chest infection. Is that correct? That's just an optional sentence we could put. What's the frucemide and dioxin for? You have to tell me. Um, the quit smoking as well as stopping alcohol were advised. So that one's nice try, Saeed. Quit smoking, no, but we can't say it like that. Um, uh, you might say this. If I want to be academic, I might say smoking cessation. I can use this. That's, but that's, I'm getting quite um, formal here. Smoking cessation and um, a reduction in alcohol consumption. And I'm going to say was advised because I see this as part of one thing. So I prefer was advised to were advised, but you could say were, but I see that as part of one piece of advice regarding to the, those lifestyle factors. Um, or we could say, um, um, the patient was advised to stop smoking and reduce alcohol consumption. So again, we're using passive. You could say I, I advise the patient to reduce, to stop smoking and reduce alcohol consumption. I wouldn't use drinking, I'd use the word alcohol. Um, so all of these are correct, everyone. 
but probably I'll recommend you use the passive. I think I advise, you've already said that things that you did, but you certainly can use active there, but I would prefer, um, I, I probably prefer as a general rule, these um, passive sentences, but you certainly can say what you did. It's certainly acceptable. Um, Okay, I'm looking at so many comments and I'm going to try to catch up. Um, Mr. X was commenced on broad spectrum antibiotics. That's great, Maria. I love that. So there's a great one. I'll just type that in. If we're going to use the patient's name, I'll just type in a few more options. Mr. Cochran was commenced on. So that's great for our um, antibiotics. That's a nice sentence, everyone. And we're using passive there. I'll just look at a few more. Um, now, um, here's, show you an example of a mistake, everyone. He was advised to decrease Um, alcohol, alcohol consumption, alcohol consumption, and someone wrote this to decrease alcohol and just change this cigarette consumption. So there's an example of what we can't do everyone there. So because he was supposed to stop smoking, not decrease it. So sometimes when we try to group things together, we can actually make an error. So that's an error where we've grouped two things, but they're two different things. So we can't, he wasn't advised to decrease smoking, he was advised to quit smoking. It's not the same thing. So you need to be accurate. And also, um, we say alcohol consumption, yes, we consume alcohol, but we don't really consume a cigarette. So I don't really like that word, um, consumption with cigarettes, personally. So I would say to decrease alcohol consumption and I would just go um, quit smoking. I'll just check a couple more. There's so many comments now, I can't keep up. Um, Okay. All right. I think, okay, I'm just going through the comments. I commence him on antibiotics. That's good. Um, I advise him to reduce alcohol intake and quit smoking. Nice, Lila. Furthermore, I scheduled a follow up visit after 14 days. But I wouldn't say I scheduled, I would say a follow up visit instead of saying i don't want too many eyes a follow-up visit was scheduled um after and i'll go two weeks since they've said 14 days let's just change it up was scheduled after two weeks or the, what about this one everyone the patient was asked to return after two weeks. So different ways that we can write this, depending on what we want to focus on. Okay, I'm just going to check your, a lot of comments here. You could, how many broad spectrum antibiotics were commenced for seven? Uh, no, that's incorrect, Hamid, because we're talking about past tense here, not present tense. This is all past. Um, so this, now we're going to use past tense here for all of this, everyone, because this is, uh, just note everyone, what we're looking at today is the first consultation. We're describing maybe there were three consultations. So we're describing the first consultation. That's what we're doing. So if you're doing the final consultation, then it's going to totally change, right? Now that brings me to, I'm going to wrap this up, everyone. What would you like to do in the next prep hour, Steve?
perhaps we do the final consultation next since we've started with the first consultation should our next prep hour with steve five be on the final consultation give a thumbs up if you want to do that Just type in a yes if you want to do that because your feedback is welcome. I'm getting a few thumbs up coming through. All right, so maybe we'll do that next because that'll sort of wrap up the series. I'm just checking a few comments. I can see lots of um, great sentences from everyone. I'm just what the one thing I'm noticing a lot of people saying he has been advised. So remember, has been commenced. No present perfect. No present perfect in the first consultation. We didn't use any present perfect sentence, everyone, because it's all in the past. Remember, today we are now in January. So we're writing about what happened in August. So it's all past tense. But you'll see present perfect. We'll all use that when we come to our final consultation. So we'll do that next time, everyone. It's looking like everybody wants that. So next one's going to be in about three weeks time, everyone. We'll post the date. So thanks everyone for coming. That's been great. Hope you got some benefit from this session. And don't forget everyone, um, come and study with OET online. Um, if you need help with your writing, reading, listening, or grammar or all skills, Got some great courses going on right now. Um, and also uh, one thing we're doing, we're doing back-to-back -back classes. So we have a class starting um, the next exam date for those taking the exam on February 2, good luck. We've got a class running now, but we have another class starting on February 4. So we're just having, we're running continuous classes at the moment because the OET exam is every three weeks. So check out our website if you're looking for a course. We can certainly help you prepare um, wherever it is required. So thanks for coming today, everyone. Bye for now, and I wish you good progress.